win on three! One, two, three! Win! Game day at Gale and Tom Benson Stadium. There's 92 players on the Incarnate Word University roster, yet these Saturdays mean more to Eric Castillo than anyone else. Why? Well, he's a senior, a third-year walk-on who never played high school football. Oh, and he's 30 years old. It's incredible. I mean, it, it's 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 like a it's like a dream, and it is for me. It's a dream come true. I mean, it's amazing. Oh, no! oh! circle there and to be all hyped up and run out with the guys. You're 30 years old. You spent all this time practicing and working out and you hardly ever really get to play in games. Why do you do this? For my sons, you know, my sons are able to be a part of it and for them to see their daddy run out on the field, um, even though he's not getting in the game, that'll teach them a lot as they get older and, and I think it's really all for them at the end. Keep your eye on the ball. Ready? There you go. Yeah. While six-year-old Eric and five-year-old Ethan are the driving forces in Eric's life now, this wasn't always the case. How he ended up at UIW is a mix of tragedy and triumph. I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know where to start. Born and raised in San Antonio, Eric played basketball all four years at Marshall High and graduated in 01. Instead of going to college, he built up his own landscape company got into real estate and was married at 23. Soon he was the father of two and from a distance living the dream. But Eric was dealing with a nightmare. He was an alcoholic. How often were you drinking? Daily. I mean, it was regularly. I hit it really well. I lived two lives. Four years of heavy drinking led to Eric losing his marriage and the right to see his sons. Shortly after, with Eric spiraling out of control, a drunken night nearly ended his life. I put my hand through a window, a double pane window. Um, I was drinking one night and put it through a double pane window. It fell down in the glass and I just yanked it out. And when I yanked it out of the glass, it cut everything to the bone. So I cut an extension cord on electricity. And it, it, I almost bled to death in front of my house. But my brother was there and he was able to help me out as a firefighter and uh, you know, do the things necessary to keep me, keep me alive before EMS got there and got me to the hospital. This scar where Staples held his right wrist together represents rock bottom. After a week in the hospital, Eric started rehabbing his hand. He couldn't landscape and didn't want to do real estate anymore. Wasn't able to use my hand for about a year. And that was my turning point. That's when I put the bottle down. That's when I knew that there had to be change. Feeling my way through the darkness, guided by a beating heart. Eric started personal training after his hand healed, even opening his own studio. But despite bouncing back, Eric wanted more. I had a dream four years ago, and I remember, you know, sitting in front of the computer watching uh, the Cardinals run out of the tunnel with my father, and I told him I'm going to do that. So Eric closed his studio. He began working with a speed trainer before applying to Incarnate Word in December of 2010. Soon he was in the admissions office, his future out of his own hands. And she said, you know, come on in, close the door. I walked in and, you know, I felt my heart drop and I knew it wasn't good news. And uh, they denied me. But Eric had come too far to quit. And that night, he and former Mayor Ed Garza wrote a letter of appeal. The next morning, Eric's phone rang. They said, you've been accepted to the University of Incarnate Word. And, you know, that was a really, that moment, where I'll never forget it. And my mother was there and it was, you know, I had tears of joy because I mean that was an opportunity for me. Eric was both accepted and given the chance to walk on to the football team. The first time I came through the doors coach asked me you know what position do you play and I said I'll play whatever you want me to play. If that's out right now give me three out. Coaches put him at defensive back and to say he struggled is an understatement. How bad were you? Horrible. My back pedal I was always really high I mean just my footwork. Eventually Eric got the hang of things earning the nickname OG and the respect of his teammates and coaches for his tireless work ethic. Since I've been here, he's never missed a day with us. He's shown up when he doesn't have to. You know, he's, he's always the first one across the line anytime it's a conditioning drill. He sets the tone for everybody else. If it's pulling a, a rope or something, y'all weigh him by 50 pounds, he's going to take everything you have to even move him. He has so much stamina and so much determination to beat you. It's kind of like when you come up to him, you're like, oh man, I have to go against Casillo because he gives it all every time, 100%. Eric finds other ways to inspire his teammates too. He collects and gives away shoes through his nonprofit, A Walk In My Shoes. 
Over the last year and a half, he's handed out almost 9,000 pairs. When he invited me to that, it opened my eyes to many things. Kind of makes me want to do more out in the community, so he brings that to the table too, not just football. How special is that when you finally see a young man really, really get what it's all about? It's very special. We talk about characters is what you do when nobody's watching. And, and you know, and, and I laugh all the time when I told Eric, I said, you're going to be the governor here one of these days. And I, I need to know you because I'll be asking you for favors. In control of his life, Eric knew he was ready to be the father his sons deserve. <laughs> he hadn't seen them in four years. But that was about to change. Life's a game made for everyone. And love is a prize. We had a party for him. They came over to the house. We had brand new bikes for him. We barbecued food, toys. So it was four hours, but it felt like 30 minutes. But it was it was amazing. At first, they called him Eric. Now, he's dad. It's surreal still for me, you know, because it hasn't been but a year and a half. So, you know, it's still, I'm still taking it in. And, you know, we have a blast together. <laughs> grateful enough to get them every other weekend so when I get them on the weekend I don't have school so it works out perfect Henry David Thoreau once said not until we are lost do we begin to understand ourselves the past seven years have been a huge part of Eric understanding what's truly important in his life the love of his sons giving to others, being a cardinal, and game day.